Hello YouTube. I have a theory about how planets form and I'd like to share it with uh, the world. And I've never seen it posted anywhere. Um, but it's how planets uh, actually form in the first place. And, and here goes the theory. Uh, I, I have a theory that um, first of all in a stellar gas cloud you have molten uh, dust floating around. Molten meaning liquefied, hot liquefied dust. And uh, the dust is colliding and merging with each other. We've all observed water droplets running down the edge of a sink or bath to merge and become bigger drops. And uh, I believe that the dust rings in an early proto-star system uh, are made mostly of uh, molten liquid material. When they collide with each other and even solid objects, they merge until they become the size of planetoids or planetesimals. Might be mispronouncing that. The liquid planetoids and stray droplets collide until they form planets. Collapsing hot gas clouds that form the star are usually hot enough for great dis or you know millions of miles out. Uh, you know, to uh, make their dust rings hot enough to be liquefied. When the stars cool, the new rocky planets also cool and create a solid crust. And uh, that's kind of like what we see with Earth. You know, we got a liquid mantle and a, and a solid crust. And when a stellar gas cloud is about to form a star system, there are molten dust particles inside the hot cloud. This is where the initial energy comes from to make the dust a liquid. The cloud is swirling and moving. The molten dust particles are colliding and merging. Eventually, the cloud collapses enough to leave this matter on the outside of it. By now, and over millions of years inside the gas cloud, uh, the mergers have formed bodies nearly the size of our moon. The processes that continue to heat this matter is a combination of radioactive decay inside the planetesimals, proximity to the, uh, to the gas cloud protostar's heat, gravitational heating from the protostar and gas cloud, and a symbiotic relationship between the lunar-sized planetoids. There are more than one of these in the same orbit along with uh, solid asteroids, boulders, pebbles, and dust particles. The larger bodies now have enough gravity to sweep this loose debris into themselves. These planetoids form a solid crust with molten interiors. When most of them eventually did collide and over time, what would keep the dust and solid objects liquid over time would be because the gas cloud initially heating it radiant heat from the, the collapsing gas cloud, radioactive decay of matter within the uh, objects themselves, lunar sized objects, and gravitational heating, kind of like we see around Jupiter with uh, the moon's Io being volcanic, uh, these bodies would influence each other. Or some combination of all that I just mentioned. And then of course there's the gas giants. How did they form? The molten or the model of planet formation is the same uh, for gas giants as it is for the molten rocky planets. The difference is the involvement here is uh, cryogenic liquids instead of molten liquids and rocks. The cryogenic particles collide and merge just like the molten rocks of the inner early solar system. They eventually form planetoids from the mergers. The planetoids also collide and form planets, and the planets, all in the same orbit and uh, crisscrossing orbits, collide and merge to form the gas giant planets. The heavier materials like rock iron and heavier materials sink to the core to form a, to form a core for the, these planets. The gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn and all the exoplanets, uh, hot Jupiters that we see out there in the exoplanets. The cores are covered by less dense liquid metallic hydrogen. The liquid metal hydrogen is covered uh, by the more abundant natural hydrogen. Then you have the methane and ammonia cryogenics. Because the ja gas giants have longer orbital periods, they also have more material to scoop up in 
their orbits to make them gas giants, unlike the inner system rocky planets with smaller orbits, and of course that makes them smaller planets. There must have been a lot of material in, in our Jupiter and Saturn's orbit to make, it, make them so big. There was a little bit less material in Saturn's orbit and even less in Uranus's orbit and just and there was just enough material in Neptune's orbit to barely make a gas giant. Think uh, of where the most to lesser material was in our early solar system. A progression of lesser and lesser substances existed beyond the orbit of Jupiter due to the diminishing sizes of our gas giants. This theory may have different material variations for other star systems based on the distribution of matter in their early cryogenic debris rings. And to sum this up, planets form from liquids, either cryogenic or molten liquids or both. And the solid parts sink to the, the core. The most dense parts, matter, sinks to the core and forms a, a planet's core. Hope you've enjoyed this explanation of how planets form. I ha I've done research on the internet and I can't find this theory anywhere. Hopefully some scientist or scientific community will pick this up and hopefully run with it. Later YouTube.